Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. And today, we're focusing on updating on these pamphobedias. So to catch everyone up to speed, for those who have been missing out on my videos, I ordered some pamphobedias, species patersi, and I ordered four of these, and only half of the four were the actual species that I ordered. The other half were unknown pamphobedia species. So, I decided to keep all four of these, and I did work out where I bought them from, so I do got a deal coming in in the future I guess, if they do have them in stock in the future. So this video is focusing on updating on them, because they came in not to looking too good, but I have to say they're looking a bit better now. And I'll leave a video on the top right if you want to go check it out, because I have to say, when they came in, they were not looking great at all. So two of these have actually molted, one of the Pamphobedius Petersi, and one of our unknown Pamphobedius also molted. And I believe these are a species Big Black, also known as Pamphobedius antinus, which people do label these as Pamphobedius species antinus peru or something along the lines of that. When it comes to labeling the Pamphobedius genus, it is a wreck, but I still will not breed these unknown tarantulas. The only ones I will breed is a Pamphobedius species Petersi, because I'm more familiar with the Pamphobedius Petersi or species Petersi than these other two unknown tarantulas. And although I do speculate that they are Pamphobedius antinus peru, I still don't want to take that risk, so I'm just going to keep them as pets. Oh. And by the way everyone, I did name the two unknown species Pamphobedias that we've gotten. The first one I named Bamboo because of the thick femurs. And the second one that we've gotten was a very beat up looking specimen that came in because the shipping was not packed properly and it was in really rough shape. So I told everyone to leave comments down below on what they want to name the beat up looking tarantula because it was in really rough shape and I did want to give it a fitting name. And somebody actually gave it a, a really good name that I like, which was Rambo, because it was in really rough shape, but it was eating and doing well. So I decided to name it Rambo, and Rambo looks amazing, honestly, because Rambo has molted and looks so, so slick, because it has some beautiful black colors. I have to say, it even looks better than the Grandma Stola Polkra's black which is honestly quite a big feat to accomplish. It is a very beautiful tarantula, and people are saying it is a Pamphobetus antinus, but even then, I still don't plan on breeding this tarantula. I'm just going to keep it as a pet, and just leave it that way, because I don't want to take the risk of creating hybrids, because that's a very taboo topic. And if you're wondering when these two tarantulas molted, these two molted about a week ago, a week and a half ago actually, so there is going to be a little bit of a time skip to when I'll feed them, so you get to see them how they look like after post molt as well. Now I find it kind of ironic that even though these two are different species and they both pretty much molted at around the same time, which both of their molts measured around 5 inches, give or take, some people are saying that these two tarantulas are now penultimate before they're a mature male. And honestly, I'm not too sure. While I have kept Pamphobetus petersi in the past, I never really had a mature male Pamphobetus petersi, or species petersi that is. I had a male around five and a half inches, which is honestly the same size as the current male that just molted, which he sadly passed away due to impaction. So I never had a chance to see him fully mature. So I never really seen a mature male specimen for Pamphobetus petersi in person, so that will be interesting to see. As for the unknown Pamphobetus species, Bamboo and Rambo, I honestly don't know how big they'll get as a mature male, so that will be interesting to see. But as for the Pamphobetus petersi, I would like to see how big they get in person as a mature male. So let's see on his next molt whether the Pamphobetus petersi or species petersi will be a mature male or be another larger male specimen before penultimate or mature male. For me personally, I don't think that this guy is penultimate. I'd say he has about two, maybe three more molts until he's a mature male, but uh, that's really just my speculation. But let us see when he molts again though for this Pamphobedia species petersi, because I'm very curious as to how large males get in terms of being a mature male. But I would not lie, he looks amazing though. I'm glad that he's eating well, and I would like to see how big he'll get, because that's my biggest curiosity. When it comes to tarantulas, a lot of people tend to mismeasure their tarantulas by over-exaggerating their size or overstretching their molts to where it's just ridiculous. So honestly, when somebody tells me they have this big of a tarantula or this little of a tarantula, I've always stated in the past and I'll state it here now. Let me see it in person. <laughs> 
because that's really the only way I can actually get a better measurement of things is if I see them in person because seeing tarantulas in person will pretty much give you a better general idea than to see people explain sizes to you or send pictures because sometimes sending pictures can be a bit misleading at times. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty certain this has happened to everyone in this tarantula hobby to where you buy something of a certain tarantula size and what you get it is either bigger or smaller than expected. <laughs> Like raise your hand if that's you because that happens to me pretty much every single time. <laughs> it's kind of a problematic thing but then again we've just come to accept it at this point in this tarantula hobby that sometimes measurements can be deceiving. Now let us jump right back into this for a second. So this is my other Pamphobetus petersi or Pamphobetus species petersi and this is the female that I've gotten. And she's pretty much starting to go into pre-molt because she hasn't been eating for like the past week and a half. So I'm guessing she's getting into pre-molt. And I have to say it's pretty interesting. Despite having a bald spot, sort of, you can still see urticating hairs on it. Which I thought was pretty cool. So, so I did a little bit of a zoom in shot for you guys to see. And uh, what else should we talk about? Oh, in regards to videos coming up this week and next week... There may be a lot of rehouse videos or a lot of updates because uh, <laughs> my collection is kind of going all over the place as of now because I'm trying to grow it out. But I'll explain, I guess, later on in the future videos. So stay tuned for that. So let us jump right back into the video. So this right here is my other Pamphobedia species that was pretty much unidentified which we named this little guy here, Bamboo, and he could be penultimate, but we have to wait and see once he molts again whether he'll be a mature male or not. I do want to keep him around as long as possible, so I'm not trying to actually overfeed him to pretty much speed up his molt rates. I just want to keep him as a pet, so I'm just enjoying him and feeding him casually. And for some reason, there is a lot of springtails in his enclosure. I'm guessing it's because of how he eats his prey, because he tears it up like crazy. You can look in his substrate and just pretty much see remains of feeders that I've thrown in. He's pretty much just tear them up, and they become part of the substrate, which is bringing in all of these springtails. But at least they're not mites, so they're honestly not a problem. So I just kind of leave them in. But let us jump into the other Ono specimen, which we're seeing here, Rambo. And this is Rambo post molt and feeding. And he looks amazing. His black colors on camera does not do him justice. I have to say that he looks better than a Gramosola Polkra. And I'm saying that because I have a Gramosola Polkra. And his blacks are very, very, very velvety. I think that's the best way to explain it. It's like a beautiful velvet black. It's just like one perfect color sheen. But for some reason, the camera makes it seem like it's gray. Which honestly kind of bugs me out a little bit. But I think it's better to see it in person because it is truly something beautiful here. And I also find it interesting how the abdominal setae the hairs on his abdomen is pretty much on the lower half of the abdomen and not all the way up to the pedestal area in comparison to the Pamphobetia species petersi. So I'm going to call this a video. So without further ado, I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday, so please feel free to do so and stick around. Follow me on my social medias and support me on Patreon. And with that, Stay lax and lax a out from the Kumo Sensei.